Uh, very much, uh, Max, and thank you, thank you for TAFs for for inviting us. Um, we prepared some some slides that I'm gonna be uh, sharing with you. Um, as 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 Max were saying, we are a part of, of Nixla. Nixla is an open source time series ecosystem. We are also a startup, and today we're gonna be speaking about the NHITS, which stands for Neural Hierarchical Interpolation for Time Series Forecasting. The the main author Christian couldn't be here right now. I think he's gonna join later, but he sends his his best regards. So in this musical team, which is also very well suited for, for Austria and, and the city of Vienna, uh, this is the outline for, for today's uh, concerto. We are going to have a, a brief introduction about the two paradigms in the field. Then the overture tour is going to be statistical benchmarks and the importance of uh, having strong uh, baselines when doing forecasting tasks. Then we're going to spend some time on the theme of interpretable uh, deep learning uh, techniques and how we at Nixla thought about that problem and tried to expand one very important uh, contribution to the field. Then the interlude is going to be the end hits, the multi-step interpolation technique that was developed by the team. And at the end, we're going to have a dancing session where Federico or Fede is going to uh, guide us to a practical uh, step by step. So where where are we in the field right now? As as you're probably well aware, there is a lot of tension between uh, traditional methods uh, that come from an econometric or statistical tradition and newer deep learning methods that were uh, developed more more recently. Clearly, there have been other uh, classical machine learning methods like gradient boosting trees or or others uh, in that tradition that have also been uh, uh, proposed as, as a good alternative for time series uh, uh, forecasting and time series analysis in general. The, re the field is really uh, uh, opinionated about this and, and, and some of the most uh, influential figures in, in the field have been uh, very expressive about the problems that we have in the field right now. And the problems is that on the one side, a lot of people have jumped into the hype of deep learning methods without really doing maybe what was necessary and proving that they are indeed better. But also uh, on the other side, uh, the tabular data represents in general a hard problem for, 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 for deep learning. Uh, this is a very good example of, 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 of a diagnosis of, of the field. The same authors in the same paper uh, at different stages uh, defended uh, different theories. So Makritakis and team a couple of years ago when they were writing this statistical and machine learning forecasting methods, they concluded that there is really no evidence uh, about the relative performance of deep learning techniques in terms of accuracy and uh, computational expenditure. The same authors under the same paper a couple of years later concluded that the best that, that some combination of deep learning models do perform better than most standard models and in statistical and ML, and especially for certain for certain specific uh, uh, use cases. To drive the point home, it seems that there's a huge disconnect between what is happening in other fields like uh, natural language processing and computer vision, and what's happening in general in tabular uh, data, or more particular in, 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 in time series. So, where do we stand in this whole uh, polemic uh, of the time series field? And, and what we're trying to do is really create a comprehensive, uh, holistic approach to the field where we are trying to offer uh, tools for practitioners in, in all traditions. Uh, for those of you familiar with, with Nixla, you, you know that we are a, a set of libraries uh, for Python, uh, open source, uh, MIT license. That means you can use it for whatever uh, purposes you, you want. And, and we have mainly three uh, libraries that include different models. On the one side, we have been developing statistical forecasting methods that include very uh, classical uh, approaches to time series that were uh, ported from, from R and were mainly developed by, by, by one of the figures that we admire the most, namely Rob Hinman and, and in generally speaking, the Monash school of thought. But we have been also developing uh, tools for practitioners that want to explore 
the application of classical machine learning algorithms like uh, XGBoost and LightGBM. And that's what we have been doing in ML Forecast. Recently, we included uh, conformal prediction as a method to quantify uncertainty about the future in ML Forecast. Uh, uh, we are also going to include this in Stats Forecast and Neural Forecast. A neural forecast includes more state-of-the-art methods of, of, of and models like uh, uh, regular neural networks and, and other uh, uh, deep learning techniques. We have also implemented some classical transformers and autoformers uh, models, although uh, 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 we think that, that, that they don't really perform as, as well. But at the end of the day, we wanted to take an agnostic approach to, to the field and offer the widest possible tools for for practitioners we also have some work around hierarchical reconciliation and certain feature uh, pre-processing so why 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 did we start uh, with stats forecast and why is stats forecast relevant i think one of the main issues in the field right now is that not always uh, benchmarking is done right this is something that we have seen particularly in many industrial applications with where, where different CTOs or data engineers take the decision to implement some fancy model because it's hype, because it was developed by a big company without doing previous baselines. So one of the things that we did when we created Stats Forecast is to offer the possibility to run many different models at a very large scale, uh, very efficiently. So here you can see a table where we show that you can fit more than uh, 10 baseline models in, in more than 10 million series in under 45 minutes, uh, paying less than $20 in computational cost in, in, a, in a single instance of, of AWS. And this is important because uh, we wanted to, to address this as a, as a prelude before we started talking about deep learning, because we are a very intentional pushing an agenda in the field that it claims that baselines are important so every time that we're invited to speak about deep learning or the uh, contributions to the deep learning field we want uh, we like to start uh, taking one step back and remembering the importance of uh, creating a uh, very good uh, baselines to start uh, comparing the advantages of new models in reality and you're gonna see this when we start uh, the practical side it's also very easy. It's not. It's not only fast. It's not only scalable. But really, in less than ten lines of code, you can start feeding many different classical models with just calling a a, a dot forecast method on the stats forecast uh, class. On the other side, and this is why we are here, we wanted to talk about deep learning and how we are contributing to that specific part of the field. And there are certain advantages that uh, practitioners have identified in the deep learning uh, field. Some of the advantages or the claimed advantages of, of this newer approach to the field uh, are indeed accuracy, increased accuracy for certain tasks, but also a uh, pipeline simplification in terms of uh, being able to fit global models uh, to many series instead of training local models for every unique combination of, of IDs and and, 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 and so on. The other thing that is very interesting about deep learning is that it's highly uh, scalable uh, because it offers the possibility of leveraging, for example, GPU the hardware to, to make numerical uh, computations uh, faster. We, we do believe that one of the main problems between uh, deep learning and statistical methods in, in academia is that most data sets that have been used as benchmarks are not really big. So all of the uh, M uh, data sets are, are below 100K uh, IDs. And, and Favorita, which is also an important data set, is below 1 million. In reality, the people or a lot of the people that have been advocating strongly for, 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 for example, deep AR, we're used to working uh, with data that is above 100 million IDs. I'm particularly hinting to the work of, of Jan Gasthaus and, and Tim Janukowski, who, who who worked at AWS at, at Amazon. And the problem that they had is that they were trying to use, uh, trying to forecast more than 200 million items across many thousands of locations. So, so we do believe that one important element to distinguishing the advantages and disadvantages of certain techniques uh, has to be understood in relation to the size 
and complexity of the data that is being analyzed or forecasted. In that respect, we are uh, currently thinking as a research group to publish one, one very large data set uh, to help the field really assess the advantages or the promised advantages of, of deep learning. Uh, that being said, uh, deep learning has performed uh, fairly well in, in, in the M uh, competitions, particularly in the M4 and M5 uh, competitions. And, and now I'm gonna be speaking uh, about uh, the end hits and, and, and how we understand our theoretical contribution to the field. And, and to understand this, uh, you have to uh, uh, understand that we come uh, from uh, econometric background. The team, the team has a background in, in economics and maths. And that at the end of the day, we we're trying and are trying to build a bridge between traditional methods and, and deep learning methods. And we think that bridge is necessary because uh, although we agree and see that the neural networks or deep learning in general is powerful and flexible, it is hardly interpretable. And, and that represents a big challenge if you are taking crucial decisions based on the models that you are developing. So we wanted to align ourselves in the in the tradition of signal decomposition, where uh, uh, the models give practitioners an intuition of what's happening with the signal. What are the elements or components of the signal classically understood as strength and, and seasonality? And, and as you are very well aware, this is a tradition that is very prominent in, in the financial uh, uh, world, particularly in central banks that that use certain sorts of, of arimas to 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 understand uh, inflation, for example, and we found when we started working in in the field uh, and, and trying to understand where we wanted to to do research on, uh, we, we we found this amazing piece of work by by Boris Oreshkin and and the whole Venjo team uh, called the Nbits. And the first thing that we did is we took the Nbits, uh, which was a, a great model in our opinion, and expanded it to include uh, exogenous variables. So instead of just having a trend and a seasonality block in the classical NV architecture, we included the possibility for the model to understand uh, the influence of exogenous variables through uh, combinational uh, encoders. And that was great because we saw uh, important improvements in accuracy uh, by including the, the effects of, of exogenous variables. And then we started uh, trying to uh, push the limits of, of the NBIT and other uh, forecasting methods and started with a very hard task in the field, namely large forecasting uh, task or long horizon, uh, uh, or, or trying to solve the long horizon problem. And the problem with the long horizon, uh, with long horizon predictions is that it is uh, uh, computationally very complex and that it offers uh, a poor and unfortunate uh, bias uh, variance uh, trade-off. Classical methods tend to have higher bias for this sort of tasks, and, and the other classical machine learning methods tend to have very high variance. And this is because uh, uh, there are mainly two classical ways to approach the, the long horizon uh, problem. One is to concatenate uh, sequential predictions. So you use t plus one, the forecasted value t, 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 t plus one to forecast t plus two, and then you use t plus one and t plus two to forecast t, t, t plus three and, and so on. And the problem with this, as, as you can intuit, is that you start concatenating errors. So your prediction tends to drift very far away from the actual signal for long horizons. And the other, the other approach to, to, to solving, uh, the other classical approach to solving long horizon problems is to do what's called a multi-step prediction, where you simply try to forecast the whole horizon, which, which, which is a good idea, but it tends to be very, very expensive. And, and to show you uh, the problem uh, that we encountered and what motivated the, the creation of the end hits, uh, uh, I, I want to explain these two graphs to you. So on the right, on the on the left, you can see how the errors decrease, uh, or the errors increase, the performance decrease in terms of, of mean absolute error uh, relative to to the horizon. And you can see that the errors grow very fast when you start having longer and longer horizons. And and the same happens with the number of parameters in millions that the model needs for for this particular task. When you start once you start moving for long, longer horizons, then uh, as you can see in, 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 in the pink line, uh, in, the, in the red circle, 
the, the number of parameters start increasing almost exponentially. So this, 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 is, this is also the case for other uh, uh, families of classical deep learning models like the autoformer, the informer, and the transformers, which are even more expensive in terms of computational time and also a lot more expensive in terms of the size of, of the models. So what's the solution and what's the end hits and what's the main intuition behind the work that we created? And the idea is quite simple and, and we would like to believe that it's also quite elegant. Namely, we chose to go for the multi-step uh, prediction approach, but instead of forecasting all the uh, horizons, namely all the different uh, uh, points in the future, we, we started forecasting less points. We started simplifying the problem. So in this, in this example, we are forecasting just uh, every second observation, that is t plus one, t plus three, t plus five, etc., until uh, uh, the, the horizon. And then we interpolate between these this predictions. And, and this is the, the intuition behind the, the end hits, the, the, the combination of this multi-rate signal sampling on the one side and the hierarchical interpolation uh, on the other side. And, and this, this idea or this architecture allows for each stack of the model to specialize in certain frequencies. So how this uh, works in, in a graphical representation is that we sample certain points that have a specific length between the, them. And the longer the, longer the, the length, the, the lower the frequency and the higher uh, the number, uh, the, the shorter the length or the higher the number of points that we start including in the models, the higher uh, the frequency. So as you can see, uh, the, the, the reconstruction of each different stack specializes in a specific frequency. And, and this has clear relations uh, to a uh, Fourier uh, transform. And that's what we did at the beginning. We, we reconstructed or showed that you can reconstruct latent harmonic signals from synthetic data. And, and, and we believe this demonstrates that uh, the NHITS does in, indeed specialize in different frequencies for different stacks. And then we wanted to prove this in, in the real world because if there is a, 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 an actual application of the end kits in the real world, then we would have two very important gains for the field. On the one side, we would have a model that is a lot less expensive than classical uh, multi-step prediction models, and is also computationally more efficient. But on the other side, we would gain a very important goal for us, namely interpretability. And uh, not only interpretability, but interpretability that has a lot of the flavors of signal decomposition traditions. Namely, if you see stack one, uh, where the length between the points that we sampled is rather uh, long, you can see that that stack resembles what we intuitively understand as a trend in, in a time series. And the second stand, uh, stack resembles a lot what we understand as, a, let's say, weekly uh, seasonality. And then furthermore, we can also understand further seasonalities like daily or hourly in this particular uh, data set. So we were very eager to go and test this in, in real world data. We used different uh, data sets of electricity to transform temperature, of, of exchange rates, electricity load, San Francisco Bay Area highway traffic, and, and other important data sets. And the results are that we saw 25 improvements in terms of accuracy over transformer-based mo models. And furthermore, we saw a lot of gains in uh, computation, or if you want, a lot of gains in, in efficiency. Uh, here, uh, you can go. we can go back to the graphs that I showed at the beginning. And, and as you can see, the end hits is very stable in terms of errors, uh, even if you increase horizons. And the same happens with the number of parameters that uh, you need uh, for the model relative to, to horizons. It, it, is, it, it doesn't grow nearly as fast as, as, as the end bits and nearly as fast as transformer-based methods. So why, why is this relevant? Uh, uh, and this is obviously based on our personal opinion, but theoretically speaking, we think that the end hits is exciting because it offers an expansion of, of a very inter interesting and classical idea in the field, namely Fourier transform. It also opens uh, the, cool, the door to very cool topics like, like wavelet transforms. For those of you uh, familiar with, with information theory, theory a, la, a la Shannon, uh, uh, and it also offers some interesting uh, uh, interpretations, like, for example, trend can be understood as 
very low frequency seasonality. Uh, and, and then again, we also think that the end bit uh, is just a special case of the end hits where uh, to sample uh, a lot of points or the, the length between the sample points is very, very small. That's theoretically what we think it's, it's exciting about the model that, that we created. Uh, practically, uh, we have seen very good results and people have seen good results with the end hits, but it's also better, cheaper, easier and simpler than a lot of the alternatives of deep learning out there. In terms of the implementation, uh, this is this is a, a toy example, but again, in less than 10 lines with a very similar syntax to the one that I showed for the stats forecast, you simply import the models, uh, you define the important parameters of the models. In this case, we're training an end bits and an end hits. You instantiate the class uh, by specifying which models you wanna use and the frequency, and you simply call a fit predict uh, syntax to start using this this sort of models. If if I did my job correctly, then then hopefully this is this show to be uh, exciting. And for the next uh, piece of the of the presentation, I'm gonna give uh, the mic to 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 my co-founder and CTO of Nix Lafere to go through a, a step uh, by step uh, guide. Thank you, Max. Let me let me share my screen. Um, can you see it now? So, so yes. I'm 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 Fede. I'm I'm CTO and, and co-founder of of Nixla. My my pronouns are the non-binary ones, they them. I'm really happy to to be here. So, how can you use n hits in in a real world example? Uh, just using using Python and our library neural forecast. So we will. Uh, I will explain you how to do that in this end-to-end -end walkthrough. So in this in this tutorial, we will cover how to how to use the neural forecast class, the methods feed and predict, and also how to how to perform hyperparameter optimization with our auto auto classes for each of the of the models we want to to make uh, to to train on 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 our data. So the first thing you you need to do is just install it's install the the libraries. In this case, we 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 will be using the neural forecast one, a stats forecast for for exploring uh, the data, uh, S3FS, which will uh, allows us to to download parquet files from AWS, and finally the data sets forecast, which contains a uh, Error metrics and and, and evaluation uh, functions. So uh, the first thing we need to to have in mind working with with neural forecast in particular and with the Nix lovers in in general is the format of the of the data. In this case, uh, we will be using a, a subset of the M4 dataset uh, and in particular the the hourly one. Uh, so the, the format of the of the data consists on, of a data frame with at least three columns: the unique ID, which identifies each of the of the time series; the DS, which identifies the the date stamp or or time stamp of the of the time series; and finally the target variable variables identified by the by the y by the y column. Uh, so in this case, we will uh, feeding a. Uh, a single model for a set of almost 400 unique unique time series. So the the, the technique we are using is is a is a global technique in the sense that you don't have to to fit uh, a particular model for each time series, but you you can use those models to train just a, a single model for a for a lot of of, of time of time series. Uh, in this case, we we are using only the last days of the data to make the the example the example faster, and in this line, basically, we are transforming the date stamp column in order to for the time series to have the the same end endpoint. Uh, this is not really necessary, but just to be consistent across the 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 tutorial. The stats forecast library. Um, has this plot method in the in the stats forecast class which allows you to explore the time the time series you just have to pass the the data frame in the in the format i i, I explained before and you will have a set of eight random uh, time series plotted 
uh, and each time you you uh, or if you you rerun the the same the same the same lane you you will you will access to another set of random eight time series which is uh, interesting because you can explore uh, how the the data looks like also you can change the the engine in this case we are plotting the time series using matplotlib but the default the default engine is plotly so you can start uh, to play in, uh, interactively with the with the with the plots so how how we tr how can we train the 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 NHITS model and, and other models using using neural forecast um, so basically we have to to import the tune module from from ray which will help us to 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 perform hyperparameter selection we have to import the neural forecast class and, and the models we want to we want to train in this case we have these auto classes which basically perform automatically the the hyperparameter selection in this case we will be using the auto hits and the auto lstm and also we are interested in not just uh, only provide point forecast but also uh, to 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 compute a probabilistic one so in this case we we will be using the multi quantile loss to produce to produce prediction intervals associated to the to the point forecast um, but you can if 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 you want change the 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 loss you the, the loss you, you, you are choosing um, in order uh, to or, or or the step the necessary the necessary step to to uh, to perform the hyperparameter selection uh, the first thing we we need to do is to create a, a, a configuration or our configuration space um, and the hyperparameter selection will deep dive into the combinations of the of the config which is basically a, a dictionary and output the best the best model for for such combinations so for example in this case for the input size which is basically the number of lags that the models will we will be seeing uh, during training uh, uh, the the hyperparameter strategy will select between 48, 48 times two, and 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 so on. Um, uh, those are the high, the most important hyperparameters of the of the NHITS model. I think the most important one is this one, the end breakdown sample, which basically is the interpolation expressivity ratio that that Max uh, mentioned. So basically, in this in this example. Uh, we are we are using uh, an architecture of of the NHITS model which consists on only five five blocks each each of one will be specializing in a in a particular frequency and the end breakdown sample uh, hyperparameter will define how many nodes will be will be will be producing so in this case uh, uh, the model will be will produce uh, nodes or, or or points each eight uh, steps um, and after that in order to recover the full the full horizon we'll interpolate as as one as 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 max was explaining so in this case for example um the model will will output just six nodes and after that will uh, the model will interpolate the, those six nodes in order to have the the 48 uh, the 48 uh, points for the complete uh, forecasting horizon. Uh, after that, we are ready to instantiate the auto classes. Here, I, 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 I'm doing that. In, in this case, to the auto classes, we have to pass the forecasting horizon. In this case, will be 40, 48, the config. If you don't pass a config, uh, the, the auto class will search uh, the, in a default hyperparameter space also we can include the loss in this case we will be using the multi quantile loss to provide a prediction intervals and the number of samples which is basically the number of combinations we want to to try uh, for the hyperparameter space so for example in this in this case we have a lot of combinations uh, only for for input size and and batch size for example uh, we will have four times uh, four which is 16 so in this case, number, number uh, the number of samples uh, controls the number of, of combinations we want to we want to we want to test. 
So in this in this example, uh, we also included the auto LSTM without a particular config config file. Uh, and also to instantiate the neural forecast class, we 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 passed a list of instantiated models. Uh, in this case, we are only using two, but you can also include the number of, of models you want to you want to use. That it's it's really it's really easy to do that, and the fre frequency, which in this case is hourly. After that, we just simply have to use the fit method using the the pandas data frame we we constructed uh, in the previous in the previous section, and once the 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 fitting part is is complete we just have to call the the plate method in order for for us to recover the the forecast so after that you you will have this 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 output which basically contains the the, the forecast for each of the models but not not only the the point forecast but also the prediction intervals associated to to those um to those point forecast if if we if you want to see the the forecast generated by the models, we simply can use the the plot uh, method from stats forecast, and we will be able to to see the forecast generated for each of the one, for each of the of the of the models. Here, for example, we are we are seeing the the forecast for the H twenty two time series, um, and and the forecast uh, uh, generated by auto n hits and auto LS, LSTM. Uh, also, we, we can focus on a particular model. Uh, in this example, for example, we can pass the auto LSTM model and, and a particular set of, of, of time series to see how the how the forecast uh, or which the forecasts are. And also we can we can select the level we want to 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 plot. So that's 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 basically how we can we can start uh, producing forecast using using uh, neural methods for for time series forecasting. Also, you can perform cross validation to assess the performance of, of the model uh, in the in the past, and also you can select the the best model for 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 every unique time series. So uh, it could be the case that. For one particular time series, it is where you not to choose uh, any hits but LSTM. You can you can you can do that in order to have production ready, production ready forecasts. Um, also, we have uh, in the in the documentation a description of each of the of the models we 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 currently have. For example, if you go to models documentation, you will be uh, you you'll see uh, the RNN based ones. Which are RNN, GRU, LSTM, and so on, and also uh, you you will have access to the to the hyperparameters of the of the model and a little expl explanation about the the architecture of the of the of the models. Um, another things you can you can try uh, using a neural forecast is long horizon forecast. Um, also, how to use the temporal fusion transformer uh, model. Uh, how to produce probabilistic long long, long horizon forecasts, uh, and one of the most interesting things I, I I think transfer learning, which consists basically in training uh, a neural forecasting models in a set of in a in a in a particular data set, and then uh, just reusing that that trained model uh, on another another data set. 